Now that we understand uh, the membrane time constant and the membrane length constant, we're in a position to discuss how action potentials are propagated down axons. And we'll begin our discussion uh, by talking about action potential propagation in unmyelinated axons. The diagram here shows an unmyelinated axon. Uh, there will be a uniform distribution of voltage-gated sodium channels and potassium channels along the uh, length of the axon. And uh, what is shown here is an action potential that has propagated down the axon and has arrived at this point here. So at this region of the axon, the uh, axon will be depolarized. This will have opened up sodium channels and there will be an influx of sodium into the cell, which indeed has generated the action potential. So there are uh, several questions we can ask about the propagation of this action potential as it travels further down the cell. First, uh, we'd like to know how does the action potential get from this segment down to the next region of the, um, of the axon. Well, we now know that when the axon is depolarized here, this depolarization will be passively propagated down the axon to other regions. And as this depolarization spreads passively, it will uh, depolarize the membrane of the axon further down, the axon opening up sodium channels, uh, leading to an influx of sodium, further depolarization through positive feedback. And before we know it, the action potential has moved from this region to the next region. And in a similar way, once this region is depolarized by influx of, of sodium, then the action potential can uh, uh, first passively and then actively move uh, along the axon through um, adjacent segments. So there are several questions we can ask about the propagation of action potentials in unmyelinated axons. The first is, we know that if this region of the axon is depolarized, not only will this depolarization spread passively uh, down the axon in a forward direction, but uh, the depolarization will be equally well propagated, uh, passively conducted backwards um, in the opposite direction. So the question is, why doesn't the action potential propagate uh, in both directions at each uh, segment, uh, at each point along the axon? Well, the answer of that is given right here. Uh, the sodium channels immediately behind the active portion of the membrane will be inactivated. They will be then open, but then the inactivation ball and chain will swell into place. So for uh, quite a distance back, the sodium channels will be in, in an inactive state, and thus the uh, action potential cannot travel backwards, but only forwards. Another important question is what uh, properties of the axon determine the propagation velocity. How quickly will this axon um, action potential move uh, from this region um, down to other regions of the axon? Well, we can um, uh, see that both the membrane time constant and the membrane length constant play an important role in determining the propagation velocity. We know that the time constant determines how quickly the voltage uh, of a um, along uh, a neuron uh, membrane uh, changes. So the time constant will have uh, an important influence on propagation velocity. If the time constant is shorter, then the voltage can change more quickly down uh, to the next segment of the axon and the propagation velocity will actually be faster. The length constant also plays an important role. If the length constant is longer, then the, this depolarization will passively spread further down the axon and sodium channels further down the axon can open up and lead to the generation of an action potential. So the longer the length constant, the 
uh, faster the propagation velocity. Propagation of action potentials in myelinated axons differ in some very important uh, respects uh, compared to that of unmyelinated axons. In the unmyelinated axon, we see that the action potential is smoothly conducted down the, uh, the length of the axon. The same is not the case in myelinated axons. Here is a diagram of a myelinated axon. Um, in the myelinated axon, most of the surface area is covered by regions of myelin generated by glial cells. These are multiple layers of membrane that insulate the axon. And uh, in between these regions of uh, myelin, there are short segments where the axon membrane is exposed. Um, these are only a few microns uh, wide and these regions are called nodes of Ranvier. Now, it wouldn't make much sense to put voltage-gated sodium channels and potassium channels in this region of the membrane underneath the myelin because um, the um, uh, channels would not have access to the ions in extracellular space. So, in fact, if we examine uh, myelinated axons, we find that all of the voltage-gated sodium channels and potassium channels are localized to the node of Ranvier. Uh, there's an extremely high density of voltage-gated sodium channels right in the node, and right at the edges of the node, there's a concentration of voltage-gated potassium channels. So, how does propagation of action potentials uh, occur in a myelinated axon? Well, up here we have a close-up of part of the um, myelinated axon, and we uh, have an action potential that has arrived at this node of Ranvier here. The sodium channels have opened, uh, sodium ions flow into the cell, uh, indicated by these arrows here, depolarizing the cell. So, we have an action potential that has arrived here. How does it propagate down the length of the axon? Well, just as in the unmyelinated axon, this depolarization will be passively um, conducted down the length of the axon. But because this region of the axon is myelinated, it has an extremely high membrane resistance. And if you look back at the equation um, for the membrane length constant, we see that the length constant is proportional to the square root of membrane resistance. And because the resistance is so high, we have an extremely um, long length constant. So, with an action potential arriving here, this depolarization will be conducted passively, not only a short distance, but because the length constant is so long, this depolarization will be conducted a very long distance, many, many millimeters down the axon. Now, the spacing between nodes of Ranvier is a few millimeters, and indeed the length constant is many, many, many millimeters so that the depolarization generated here can easily spread down to the next node of Ranvier, and in fact, many nodes, uh, enough so that the sodium channels at the next node will open up and then sodium will flow into the uh, axon here. And before we know it, uh, the action potential has jumped from this node to the next node. So, in fact, action potentials are not propagated down myelinated axons smoothly. They actually jump from one node to the other. And because the passive conduction of depolarization occurs very rapidly at a good, um, at much, much faster than active propagation, um, uh, the uh, time it takes to jump from one node to the next is very rapid. And what the result of this is, is that the propagation velocity in a myelinated axon is much faster than in an unmyelinated axon. And indeed, uh, propagation velocity can be a hundred times faster uh, in a myelinated axon than in an unmyelinated axon of equal diameter. Now, um, because the membrane capacitance um, is also decreased by this myelin, 
and we can talk about this in class, why the membrane capacitance in, is decreased. The uh, time constant of the membrane is decreased, which also speeds up propagation velocity. And this also means um, that you need much less influx of sodium to depolarize the cell. Because the transmembrane uh, currents are restricted to the nodes, you only have to depolarize the nodal membrane. Much uh, less energy is also expended in propagation of myelinated, uh, in uh, propagation of action potentials in myelinated axons. So this process of jumping, propagation of the action potential jumping from one node to the other is called saltatory conduction. That's the name we give to propagation in myelinated axons. And the term saltatory conduction comes from the Lat Latin, which means to leap or to dance. So the action potential is leaping, or perhaps dancing, from one node of Ranvier to the next. We will conclude our discussion of propagation of action potentials down axons by considering uh, a very simple question. And I'd like you to think about this uh, question now, and we'll be talking about it in detail in class. The question very uh, simply is, what factors influence the speed of propagation of action potentials in unmyelinated axons, and what factors are responsible for um, determining the uh, speed of propagation in a myelinated axon.